Okay, well, here we are again, and if you watched the video on what to do with your first tarot deck, you'll recognize this look because Spirit is not letting me go today at all. Um, I am doing a poll that I usually don't do and have not yet done for like a video or a collective guidance, and that was a goddess power poll with the goddess oracle deck. Um, let's see, my phone is dying, so I'm going to try not to take 10 years to do this. Uh, but I was ignoring them earlier this morning, and I should not have been. So we have two goddesses that have come to us for this time period, like for the rest of May, it feels like. I just asked, because I, I felt them coming, I just said, just come through and let me say whatever I need to for you. So we have Benzai Ten first, and I love this goddess, even though I really just starting started to get to know her this year. Um, and we have Nike coming through with her. Sorry, I pulled that back so quick. Nike. Um, whew. Wow. Sorry, I'm just looking at the cards underneath them. Devotion, reverence, and wise leadership. Uh, oh, 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 okay, okay, now we see what it is. Benzai Ten came through with beauty, and we'll talk about her again in a minute, because that goddess is a lot sharper than this deck would lead on, and ambition follows her. We must pursue beauty in all of its ways relentlessly. What is beauty to you is not always beauty to me, but we still must both create beauty. We're going to go ahead and lay down the cards that came with them. We got Parvati, devotion. This is no longer an option. What are you showing devotion to? Is it your job? Is it the structure? Is it a status symbol? Is it money? Are you showing devotion to yourself? Are you showing devotion to your divinity? Are you showing devotion to your spiritual practice? Because if you are not, you need to. For my people who are already on a spiritual path, are you challenging your devotion? Are you digging into your devotion? Are you creating new ways to share it and to show it? And that doesn't mean preaching. It doesn't mean dragging people into religion and into spiritual relationships and things that are not good for them. How are you practicing your devotion to your divine? How are you nourishing yourself so that you can be the correct expression of the divine? And by correct, I mean most authentic and most you. That's that goddess message today. <clears throat> White buffalo calf woman came through with reverence. How are we experiencing reverence? Have you taken a moment to stand still and realize that you are infinite and minute? Have you taken a time to stand still and realize that the expanse of the universe is genuinely outside of you and within you. You are a whole being, a whole world. Are you in awe of that yet? Are you looking outside and in awe yet? Seeing the way that people are connecting and reaching out and creating? Reach for this time with reverence. Grasp the divine in this time with reverence and the mundane too. Look for the glory and the love of God's creation in the mundane. I know this time is tough for everybody, and Spirit knows this time is tough for everybody. This is not a trial that they expected us to bear easily, but it's one that we could do a lot better in. And don't get me wrong, there are people that are like phenomenal. Teachers are killing it. Our nurses and doctors and aides are killing it. Parents are killing it. Neighbors are getting together lightly, like, you know, from a distance, but getting to know communities. But, but are we grateful for this time? To those of you who are complaining, who are bitching, who are worried about your hair, please get your shit together. Have a whole come to Jesus meeting with yourself. Because we were not given this time to be angry and selfish. We were given this time to remember that even as these things rage on, the leaves are still unfurling on the trees. There is still glory. There is still good. There are still phenomenal things to revere and be in awe of. How are you practicing that reverence? And how, how are your leaders practicing it? 
And I asked that because the card that came through next was Epona. My heart is racing right now, and I'm only sharing this message because it's the inevitable of what's coming up. Not only are we being asked to dig into these things, but we're being told to. Because the change is only beginning. It, you can't go backwards from this. So, anyway, we come to Epona with wise leadership. For yourself, in your homes, in your communities. Fuck a country. Where's the leaders in your community? Communer, community where are the leaders in your community and are you one of them how are you being asked to step up and lead and how are you fulfilling that question and if nobody else has asked you yet then you need to ask yourself and that goes for me too how can I lead how can I teach how can I uplift how can I share from my house from my front porch from driving by in my car what is it you don't have to be the person making 900 masks and you don't have to be the person who is delivering food but you can be the person who drives by and waves you can be the person who sends a message you can be the person writing letters how are you leading to be a wise leader means to lead with compassion to be a wise leader means to lead with empathy you cannot make decisions for the whole from the ego. So then you damn sure cannot make decisions for a healthy self from the ego. Let's elect wise leaders. Let's make ourselves wise leaders. Let us be wise leaders in our community. <clears throat> we have two cards left and that's it. Hecate or Hecate. I love her because she's that bitch. The in-between. This is the in-between time. This is our time to choose. This is our time of control. With things kind of crumbling and infrastructure changing and people's minds being opened and pursuing spiritual connection and pursuing emotional connection and reaching out to help one another, we have a responsibility to grasp this this time and this choice with both hands, with our whole heart, with full intention to make it something phenomenal. Let's do it together. You know what I mean? The in-between is that space of connecting and, and direction. It's a crossroads. With crossroads, there aren't just, just choices, one or the other, but options. There are so many of us here on this world with so many different gifts, so many different needs and, and wants and things to offer. Let's help each other. Let's ask each other for guidance at this time. Let's share the knowledge that we have. Um, but also let's ask the divine for guidance. Ask your guides, ask your goddesses, ask your ancestors. Ask your like cosmic goo in the Lysol bottle. I don't care how you name it, but ask it. And ask yourself. What can you do at this time? Oh, our final card. I don't even know if I'm going to do a May, a May full moon video for after this. Our final card is Freya with radical acceptance. I am not even sure how to... Because she's not saying anything. She's not saying anything. Sorry, my phone with the 20% battery. She is literally just standing there just about how she looks in this card. You can only keep a blindfold on for so fucking long. You can only choose not to see for so long before the other experiences should be overwhelming your senses. We are living in a time of inevitable change. We are living in a time that people are claiming is the beginning of the age of Aquarius. We're living in a time when, like I said, infrastructure is crumbling. Our, our immune systems cannot keep up with the ways our factory farming has fucked up the environment and allowed diseases to be transmuted. We are still, still, seriously arguing over things like race and religion. And yet we knew 
that times like these were coming. We knew that times like these were inevitable. Now is not the time to bury your head in the sand any longer. In whatever way that message hits you, pursue it. Stand up for what you believe in. Nurture your heart. Connect with those around you. Put into practice compassion. Put into practice empathy. Work to make wise decisions and to love yourself. And as you work to love yourself wholly with awareness, with, with introspection, turn that openness and love to your neighbor and help them to find it in themselves so that they may turn it on their neighbor too. So that we're uplifting together and rising together instead of crumbling. We have an opportunity to meet this time with strength and love and goodness and light. And why waste it? That's all. <laughs>